All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we are very happy to have Till Verhan speaking about the Chevrolet Monk formulas for above varieties. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So I will start by giving a rough motivation by considering a bigger picture. So by introducing the theory of stable envelope, Morlik and Kunkov provided a way to assign to a very rich family of symplectic varieties with torus action and some additional properties, an integral system. And the family of bow varieties is also a very general family of varieties living inside these varieties that fit into the framework of Morlik and Kunkov. And one nice property of them is that they naturally generalize the cotangent bundles of flag varieties. And in the case of cotangent bundles of flag varieties, the integral model side is very well known. In this case, we recover the XXX model. But also, of course, um, the cotangent bundles of flag varieties just project down to the flag varieties. And in this case, um, we have these rich combinatorics of the intersection theory, which is, of course, known as Schubert calculus. And our, our approach to get an understanding of um, the theory for both varieties is to take, um, to take very well-known results from the XXX model and Schubert calculus and try to find out how they generalize to the world of both varieties. So next, let us maybe um, consider the case of the cotangent bundles of flag varieties and the XXX model in a little bit more detail. Okay, now I cannot, what is happening? Why can't I? Okay, it's going that way. Okay, so here we have the cotangent bundles of flag varieties and the XXX model. and this theory comes with two important cohomology classes. On the one hand, we have the stable envelope classes or stable envelope basis elements. And on the other hand, we, um, we can relate them to the XXX model via um, their base change matrices. So the base change matrix of different stable envelope bases gives the R matrix of the XXX model. And having an R matrix always gives us a Hopf algebra. And in this case, it's a very well-known Yangian of GLN. Now, there's also a second important family of cohomology classes in this series, namely the first churn classes of tautological bundles. And they also have an interpretation on the XXX model side. Namely, they are naturally algebra generators of a maximal commutative subalgebra called the Gelb von Zetlin subalgebra of the Youngian. And this algebra was very well studied by Terazov and Narazov. And so this well established picture in particular implies that we have a very nice formula for the multiplication of churn classes of tautological bundles with respect to the stable envelope basis. And now I want to describe this formula in the special case of full flag varieties and the cotangent bundles. So at first I want to talk about stable envelopes for um, cotangent bundles of full flag varieties. So Fn should be the full flag variety parameterizing full flags in uh, C to the N and T star Fm should be the cotangent bundle of Fn. Now by construction, this variety comes with an action of a rank n plus one torus. So the first act, um, factor is just uh, inherited from the torus action on C to the n. And since the cotangent bundle is a vector bundle, there's also always a torus action given by stelling the fibers. So this is this additional torus here. Now, stable envelopes, they are maps from the T fixed locus to the equivalent cohomology ring of the cotangent bundle of the full flag variety. And they depend on a choice of a generic co-character of uh, the rank n torus. Now, since, um, yeah, they are uniquely determined by certain stability conditions, namely uh, normalization, a support, and a degree condition, 
And since the t fix points of the cotangent bundle of a flag variety are just the symmetric group, we can also view stable envelopes as a map from the symmetric group into this equivariant cohomology ring. Now, these stability conditions, they are pretty similar to the stability conditions that appear in equivariant Schubert calculus. And actually, stable envelopes and Schubert, um, Schubert classes are pretty close connected, as stable envelopes can be interpreted as one parameter deformations of equivariant Schubert classes. So by a certain limit argument, the stable envelope classes specialize to the equivariant Schubert classes on the base band, a base space, um, the full flag variety. So the multiplication of uh, tautological bundles with respect to the stable envelope basis can be um, deduced from the work of Mollick and Okunkov. So if I have my ice tautological bundle, then the multiplication is um, can be described as follows. So we have churn class of the ice tautological bundle and we take its dual times the stable envelope class corresponding to a permutation is equal to the following sum. So we have a diagonal term where the coefficient is just the equivalent multiplicity of my churn class at this uh, point. And then we have an interesting off-diagonal term. And this off-diagonal term are precisely those permutations that are obtained from W by a transposition Tjk such that J is smaller or equal to I and K is strictly larger than I. And we demand that the Bruja length goes up by one. And then we have, uh, yeah, and all these permutations contribute to the off-diagonal terms. And then they all have the same coefficient, namely the equivariant parameter corresponding to the torus, rank one torus that scales the fiber. So here we have it. And for this formula to hold, we choose our co-character to be this basic choice to be t goes to t, t squared, and so on. Yes, and as I said, the stable envelope classes degenerate to the Schubert classes. And therefore, this limit gives us back the classical chevalier Monk formula in Schubert calculus, which describes the churn class multiplication of tautological bundles with respect to the Schubert basis. And the actual big difference in this formula is just that the length here just has to go up by one where in the stable envelope world, the length just should increase. Yes. And since we can uh, get back the classical chevalier monk formula, we can view this theorem here as, as a generalization of this um, formula to the cotangent bundle of flag varieties. OK, having said a lot about um, the world of cotangent bundles of flag varieties, let us now move to the world of bow varieties. And I want to say first some general remarks, why they are interesting and why one could expect that we should also a formula in this business. So first of all, they are a family of smooth symplectic varieties with a torus action and they fit into the framework of the work of Mollick and Okunkov, which in particular gives us that these stable base, uh, stable envelopes exist. Moreover, this family is very rich. There are lots of interesting varieties in it. So it contains type A Nakajima quiver varieties as well as a 3D dual spaces, which are the so-called Coulomb branches. And from their construction, it's really surprising that there is um, one family of varieties that contains both of them. Moreover, they also come by construction with a family of tautological bundles, and they have finitely many torus fixed points, and the fixed point combinatorics of both varieties naturally extends the fixed point combinatorics of flag varieties and their cotangent bundles. So altogether, these facts give that it's reasonable to ask if we can generalize the previous formula which we had in the world of the cotangent bundle of flag varieties 
to the world of four varieties. Okay. Now I want to say um, a short word about uh, the construction of four varieties, which is due to Nakajima and Takayama. And I will use um, the combinatoric language of Ricard Rimani. So the input of a bow variety is a brain diagram. And a brain diagram is an object like this. So we have at first a bunch of uh, red slashes. Then we have a couple of blue backslashes. And between them, we have horizontal lines, which carry a label, a non-negative uh, natural number. Now, the construction of a uh, bow variety takes this input, a brain diagram. And the first step is to assign to it uh, a space of quiver representation. And this is a certain symplectic variety to which we can apply Hamiltonian reduction. And this then gives us um, the bow variety, which is denoted by C to the D. Now, by the construction of a bow variety, each of these horizontal black lines gives us a tautological bundle. However, the tautological bundles in the blue part, they are just trivial. So all interesting tautological bundles that can appear are in the red part of this brain diagram. Um, next, I want to continue with uh, saying a few words about the fixed point combinatorics of bow varieties. So, um, bow varieties also come by construction with a torus action, which scales the symplectic form. And the fixed points have been described by Nakajima and also by Ricard Rimani and Shu in a very uh, convenient way. Namely, the fixed points of a bow variety correspond to certain combinatorial data attached to the brain diagram D, which are called tie diagrams. Now, a tie diagram is an object like this. We um, extend our brain diagram by adding ties between red and blue lines. And we demand that the number of ties covering a horizontal black line is always equal to um, the label of this horizontal black line. Yes, so this here is an example of a tie diagram. And in particular, if our brain diagram looks like this, so we have um, n red slashes and then um, n blue backslashes, and we start with 1, 2, up to n, and then we go down n, n minus 1, n minus 2, up to 1, then my bow variety turns out to be the cotangent bundle of a flag variety, and the tie diagrams correspond to elements of a symmetric group Sn. So in this case, we recover the fixed point combinatorics of flag varieties. Now, the main result is that via the following combinatorial moves, we get also a formula for the cotangent, uh, for the multiplication of first joint classes of tautological bundles with respect to the stable envelope basis. So this um, combinatoric move is what I called a, a simple move. So we are, have a configuration like this, where we fix a horizontal line and call it X. And we have two red lines, one to the right, one to the left, and two blue lines. And we demand that the red line is connected to the first of the blue lines, but not to the second. And the red line at the uh, left is connected to the last of the blue lines, but not the first. And then we say we apply a simple move when we just swap the endpoints. Then this will again give us back a tie diagram. And the theorem is that when I take a black line in the red part, so the interesting part, and I also consider the corresponding tautological bundle, then the multiplication of this churn class with respect to the stable envelope ba um, basis looks as follows. So C1 of chi x times stable envelope basis element um, labeled by the tie diagram D is again equal 
to the following sum. We have a diagonal term, which is just a fixed point restriction of this churn class. And then we have an off diagonal term. And the off diagonal term are precisely those tire diagrams that we can obtain from D via a simple move over X. And then we have again this equivariant factor, which corresponds to scaling the symplectic form. And it appears up to a sign that we can explicitly compute. So altogether, this is basically what we could hope for. Namely, we have a very nice generalization of the chevalier monk formula from the cotangent world to the world of bow varieties. And this is all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very, uh, very nice talk um, to Till.